Hey guys, Chris here. Tonight we're going to be taking a look at some encounters that have been sent in to me by you guys, the viewers. And some of them are pretty scary. That's next. So got my hand torch. This also doubles as a uh, radar detector <laughs> on my uh, city street here. Got you going 26 in a 25. Slow down. And I have, oh, I wanted to show you guys this. I have a bear deterrent here. Usually put that in my backpack, something to have in case you need it. Also got the uh, whistle right here. I always like updating you guys with whatever I got. Got the whistle here. I'm gonna really blast it tonight. You guys ready for this? Cover, cover your ears. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Up to a half mile away. And tonight's beer, we have, it's called Great White beer and that is by the Lost Coast Brewing Company and they are out of uh, Eureka, California which is along the coast. That's pretty cool. So that's our beer for tonight. Yeah, I am up in the Sierras tonight. Been a little breezy over in the next valley where the Cedar Grove is so I thought I'd check something else out. I took a logging road from Carson City up into the mountains and just found a quiet little spot in the woods here to hang out until the sun goes down and uh, it gets a little more spooky. So yeah, they got really fun labels on their beer. Also comes in a can as well, so all right. Whoa, it goes right to the edge with the uh, foam. Yeah, I dropped this in a creek down below and hiked it up, so. All right, cheers. Okay, so after I did my encounter, that video, I said, if you guys ever had your own stories, send them in, I'll take a look at them, see what I can do. And I got pretty good response on it. I'm still trying to get through to, to many of them and see what I can do with, with them, but I've read all of them. So I really appreciate you guys sending in your stories. Uh, this particular one is from Eric, and Eric lives in Roseville, and he goes on to say, Hi Chris, love your channel, you can use my name, I really don't give a shit. <laughs> my name is Eric. I live in Roseville, California, about 125 miles from Reno, Nevada, close to you. My Bigfoot experience happened in 1976. I was 10 years old. My parents owned a cabin in Brookdale, California in the Santa Cruz Mountains on Highway 9. And these all aren't, uh, don't have to be Bigfoot experiences, but it is interesting that these experiences are more common than most people know. Once you get on the internet and you see people start talking about their experiences collectively, if you know what I mean. My parents owned a cabin in Brookdale, California in the Santa Cruz Mountains on Highway 9. There was a creek 400 feet from the cabin that had bluegill and steelhead trout and no shit lobster sized crawfish. I wasn't fishing this day, only catching the giant crawfish I had, 
was at the creek mostly most of the day and having caught six of the giants with my fishing pole and bacon I stole from the fridge I used a big metal Folgers can to put the crawfish in note I had a Phillips screwdriver in the Folgers can I used to kill the crawfish at about 7 p.m. my mom yelled for me to come in and eat dinner I didn't reply to her yell about 10 minutes later she yelled with conviction get my ass back to the cabin for dinner <laughs> moms will do that dinner's getting cold and uh, we don't want that to happen so I gathered my fishing pole my Folgers can with my catch note I don't I didn't have time to clean the crawfish at the creek the Giants were almost too to the top of the Folgers can making it a dangerous walk back to the cabin and the last thing I, you want to happen is get pinched by one of those monster crawfish it could do some serious damage I get back to the cabin the front door was about 12 feet up the stairs that led to our huge porch kind of an odd setup so I left my catch at the bottom of the stairs that led to the front door my bedroom window was right above the stairs about 12 feet up my family and I had dinner and after dinner my mom said get in the shower and you can clean your crawfish in the morning I said okay and I showered and got ready for bed Chris I always slept with my window open I love the cool nights and love listening to the breeze going through the giant redwoods cool I love the redwoods in fact I am going to be going to the redwoods and the sequoias sometime this uh, summer maybe even next month so looking forward to that and telling stories from the giant forests <laughs> Well, about 3 a.m., I heard my Phillips screwdriver hitting the sides of my metal Folgers coffee can. Going tink, tink, tink. I said to myself, someone has my coffee can. I mustered up the nerve to look out the window, and there it was. Its back was to me, and it was holding my coffee can with my crawfish in it. That took me all day to catch. Chris, the thing froze. It knew I was looking at it. I could see the hair hanging down the arms and its pointed head with no neck, its huge butt cheeks, and giant feet. The street light lit the driveway up really good, making it possible to see the detail of this person. Person. <laughs> yes, person. These beings are people. I was scared shitless, got the nerve to run into my mom and dad's bedroom, woke my dad, and said, This hairy thing has got my coffee can. I never forgot the look on my dad's face. He thought I was nuts and told me to go back to bed. Scared shitless, I went back to my room and looked out the window. He, she, or it, or they was gone, and my coffee can left in the middle of the driveway. That morning I got up early, headed down to the drive. Big hairy man ate all my crawfish and left the screwdriver sitting next to the coffee can. I didn't know what, what I had seen until after I watched the TV show called In Search Of with Mr. Nimoy, Leonard Nimoy, which is Spock, he, had a, he was the host of that show, showing the Patterson film, the Gimlin Patterson Bigfoot film. I knew then what I had witnessed, it was a Bigfoot. My parents owned the cabin until 2002 and I never had another experience. Chris, these beings are real. Please be safe in your travels, and I hope you carry a personal locator with you when you're in the woods. These beings outclass us in every way. If they want you, they will take you. Keep your head on a swivel, and if your hair turns to wire while you're in the woods, it's time to leave. Keep up the good stories. I would love to have a few beers with you someday. Thanks, Eric. All right, thank you, Eric. Appreciate that. Yeah, pretty interesting story to actually... As, as a 10 year old looking out your window and seeing this large hairy man being just below your window that would be pretty pretty frightening very memorable too so wow okay so this next one is from Jack who's from Florida my mom lived in Jensen Beach Florida on Hutchinson Island for part of her life her condo is where the red marker is on this picture. As you can see on the riverside there is a dock I used to fish there with my brother or by myself. I had caught so many fish in that area it was amazing. I once caught a smaller tarpon on a fly rod once when a wedding reception was going on 
and that when I finally landed it, I got applause from the wedding party. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very nice. You can also see a small nine-hole golf course next to the docks, and what looks like woods is actually mangroves. I have played golf in that cloud, and between each holes there are mangroves and streams of water like this. As you walk the golf course, you can see the streams of mangroves and water in between the holes. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, Florida is a very interesting state. Okay, so back to my story. I was out fishing at dawn one morning and fly casting off the dock. The bottom circle in the picture is a pipe that comes out of the sand. And as I was fishing, I saw a figure walk out of the mangroves across from that pipe and into the water. Like this red line at the bottom of the picture. The figure was tall and not bulky, more average size, and it walked into the water and sat down so its head was just above the water. Interesting. I assumed it was a grounds worker working on that pipe or something. The sun was coming up so it was in a shadow so I could not see its face. After about 10 minutes I yelled at it because it was screwing up my fishing. <laughs> While it was still in the water with its heads just sticking out of the wa water, it decided to move closer to me. Wow. At this point it was pissing me off so I grabbed a spinning rod and started casting towards it close enough to it that it had been a human it would have yelled back at me or if it was like a worker or something. I called for my brother who came and saw and he said it was just a floating coconut or something in the shadows. He went back to fishing. I made a couple more casts. Now mind you, I'm six feet, six inches tall and standing on the dock two feet above the water. Whatever it was stood up. I yelled for my brother who was in the water and on the other side of the dock. It stood up and walked to the beach across the golf course and back into the mangroves. It was covered in fur as I could see the water dripping from it and it disappeared into the mangroves and my brother and I left here to go back to my mom's condo. It wasn't like freak me out scary, just completely weird. And I believe it was Bigfoot. That's my story, Jack. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Yeah, it's quite the, uh, the reveal at the end, thinking it could be a worker or a person. And then it's really tall and it stands up and then you see the light just hits it enough to see that there's hair or fur on it and it's dripping off the off of it wow that is a direct <laughs> visual encounter quite a story all right thank you thanks jack okay story number three is from ron and it took place in near bellingham washington Hi Chris, I recently found your channel and have enjoyed it very much. I am an avid hiker and my wife and I have enjoyed the areas you have showcased in your videos. Attached are a few stories I have had the pleasure or displeasure to experience in my life. I am a retired firefighter and almost 60 years old. You may share these stories and my name if you wish. The first one happened in 1972 or 73. My twin brother and I were around 10 or 11 years old, we were visiting a friend at his house at the end of a cul-de-sac off a street in Bellingham, Washington. There was only one street light on and it was dark. We were shooting the shit on his front porch when we heard what sounded like several dogs barking in the distance. But we're getting closer and closer. To the right of the house was a pasture with a typical barbed wire fence bordering it. Beyond the pasture was woods. Soon, while looking in the direction of the barking dogs, we saw this thing running upright on two legs hop over the fence like it was nothing. Then it hit the yards of the homes on the other side of the street without hitting the street at all. And it ran the entire length of the street through the yards of five or six homes and then crossed another street and then it ran back into the woods with four or five dogs chasing it the whole way. It seemed to be tall and ran with a rather stiff arms and kind of what I can only describe as loping. It was all one color. What I don't remember was what color 
as it was kind of dark, but had what looked like long flowing hair coming off of its back. I remember it scared us all beyond belief and didn't sleep outside as planned that night. I don't know what it was, why it didn't run down the road instead of the yards, or why the dogs were chasing it. Wow, that's quite the story. <laughs> yeah, just actually again to see, to physically see one of these creatures and then just see it running by you and clearly see how big it was, how it was running, and then the, the that it was definitely hair all over it. So, wow. Story two. My brother and I were 13 or 14 at the time deer hunting up towards Mount Baker with my dad, his friends, and his friend's son. About a half hour before dusk, I came across tracks in the freshly fallen snow. About four inches total had just fallen. They were large, unmistakably humanoid, with all the toes, heel, instep, all distinct in the track. They were going straight uphill over a ridge into the brush and into the wilderness. Yeah, I can relate to that, seeing those tracks I saw in Lassen National Park, and that is a very, very wild park, very large park too, Northern California, but yeah, very interesting. Mount Baker, yeah, I've heard there's uh, quite a bit of activity in Washington for sure, and then Mount Baker is quite a spot for that. Story three, this is probably the one that bothers me the most. I am an avid hiker and decided to go out on my own and hike Section J of the PCT, which is the Pacific Crest Trail. I wanted to do it alone because, ironically, I wanted to get through that uneasy feeling one may get when in the wilderness by themselves. I believe you can learn a lot about yourself doing that. Section J is between Stevens Pass and Snoqualmie pass which is right around 70 miles hope I pronounced that correctly I was on my last night camped by myself at the far end of the park lakes you guys can look that up it's fun to look things up on the map and and learn little oh, little geography south of me was the PCT north of me was nothing but wilderness which drops down into spectacle lake about three miles away I had finished dinner and getting settled in my two-person tent right at dusk when you can just still make out the outline of the trees. Yeah, I can relate to that. We're getting to that point right, right here. Another eight minutes is going to be probably pitch black here. So I was listening to the last of the chirps of robins of a robin when the robin started chirping wildly. It landed in a tree about 20 yards north of me and chirped like something was trying to kill it. I have never heard a robin chirp like that. It suddenly stopped when the silence was almost immediately met with three of the loudest wood knocks I could ever have imagined. It sounded as though something massive picked up a very large wood baseball bat and hit a tree with all its might. It echoed off the surrounding hills. It was about 30 yards to the north of me. There were no other campers in there and nowhere to camp for that matter. I was terrified. Wow. I lay there thinking of what options I had. My only defense was a can of bear spray. I chose not to carry a sidearm because of the extra weight. I briefly thought of getting up, packing up, and heading down the trail, but that was not a good option in the dark, not knowing what the hell made that sound? Although I had a pretty good idea. I eventually fell asleep and made it through the night to tell the tale. Suffice to say, the experience did nothing toward my goal of feeling more at ease in the woods. But my family and I still go out and enjoy the wilderness. All right, good for you. Good for you. Well, those are my stories. I have actually have a UFO story, also a situation I found myself in that seems I lost some time. But perhaps another time, I firmly believe there are a lot more things in this world we know nothing about. Thank you for being here so I could share. I appreciate it, Ron. All right, thank you, Ron. Really appreciate that. Wow, some really interesting stories. And uh, yeah, to hear something that close, 30 yards away, and it's clearly making sound, and it clearly knows that you're there because it's letting someone else, letting others know, I would, I would guess, so. 
So this next one is from Joe, who's from Southern New Hampshire. Okay, I own 15.2 acres in Southern New Hampshire. Very much like suburbia here now since the last, for the last 20 years. And we rarely walked back out there since I purchased the property over 20 years ago. It is very wild and overgrown. A few years ago, I adopted a dog off of Craigslist who hates everyone, so walking him is a challenge on our road. So I hired someone to clear a path to the back of my property so I could walk my dog with less stress for him, me, and the neighbors. As long as it's not very wet season, I can walk my dog all the way to the back of the very end of my property. It is very challenging terrain, but after all the wet spots, it is rather a nice walk. I am never really comfortable walking in the woods, so I'm always hyper vigilant. We do have bears, coyotes, foxes, possum, porcupines, bobcat, deer, moose, and hunters that stray on the property and my dog. When we are back there, I let him have the whole 12 feet of leash. So one nice crisp fall day, I was walking my dog, Moo, on his trail. I see the rock I like to sit on for a rest, but someone else is sitting on it. A large man in what looks like a long, hairy, reddish coat. I only ever see the back. I see a large oval head. Again, I'm still thinking it's a coat. He is wide at the shoulders and the body about the same width down to where he is seated and he is tall even in the seated position. Wow. I thought it was weird hunting garb, but I thought I do not know all the latest hunting gear. I was going to turn back, but I thought I would just catch his attention and make some noise to see what type of reception I got. Keeping my eyes on him the whole time, clearing my throat, he is briefly out of my sight as I pass by a tree trunk. When I can see him again, it is now a red fox laying flat on top of and against the rock. It looks like the fox is hugging the rock with all four limbs. I have never seen a fox do that. Interesting. I stopped and stared at the fox to see what its intention was and still trying to figure out what happened to the large man and maybe what I saw was just a fox before I passed the tree. It was some type of optical illusion. The fox ran away in the direction the man was long before it was a fox. I did go over to investigate where the man went after the fox left. The rock kind of overlooks a huge crater-like indention indentation in the earth. So yeah, I was expecting to see a man walking down there. Nothing. Off and on, I think about that incident and I'm convinced what I saw was a man or a man-like creature. Why, why else would I think it was a man in a fur coat? I doubt a fox would look like a large man sitting on a rock no matter what angle I viewed it. My dog did not react, but he never reacts with large animals like bears. He does go nuts over strangers and foxes, but anything large like a bear he keeps very quiet and hides behind my legs like he did that day. This was daylight as well as light a wooded area can be. Wooded areas always seem darker to me. I must say, since that instant, I have not been too eager to walk down that way. Now that my sweet little crazy dog has passed, I doubt I'll ever walk out there again by myself. Wow. All right, well, thank you, Joe. Appreciate you sharing that. Uh, yeah, that's really interesting. You just lost him for a second, and then it, the situation kind of changed. <laughs> I've heard they're very stealthy like that. And then the fox, maybe the fox was there. I, I, I can't, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what you saw. But the fox was maybe out in front. And then when he, when the, uh, this creature left, it was just the fox was the only thing left sitting there. But thank you for sharing that, you guys. Um, if anyone else has stories, incidents, encounters, anything that kind of scary, uh, I would be well, willing to read them on the channel here like I'm doing tonight. And it is <laughs> suddenly very dark in the woods here. <laughs> um, send them to basecampchris2 at gmail.com. 
and I will take a look at them and get to them and then I will read ones well, what I can. Also, if you like hiking and backpacking and stories about the strange, unexplained, and things that go bump in the night, please like, subscribe, and comment. I always appreciate that. And we're going to be doing more stories and your stories and encounters uh, in the future here. And I need to hike out of here, so I better, better get going. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Keep hiking. <laughs>